Hey free to play gang, before we start the content I just want to say that I appreciate you for clicking into this video and I'm truly thankful that you even stopped by at all. So here's the drill, okay so if you're new, welcome, if you're not, welcome back. So today we will be discussing what my personal take is on how new players can best acclimate themselves to the game and to progress the way I think makes the most sense from a minimaxing point of view. And to make the most of your time, stamina and money if you so feel like supporting the game. So if you're a free to play player, minimaxing is something that concerns you a lot. So before we begin, if you find that this video was helpful to you, be it as a new player starting out or as someone stuck in the early to mid game and just not knowing what to do, then do me a great great favour and hit the subscribe button for more of such dislike videos. So subscribing is free and you can always change your mind afterwards. Now this video is going to be a long one but I'll have the timestamps wherever they are necessary so sit back and relax and let's not waste any more time and let's get right into it. Now before we begin, take note that for this beginner guide, you can definitely replace any of the experts that I'm talking about if you have better alternatives, okay? So I'm just going with a strictly basic perspective on what anyone, any free-to-play player can obtain from the start. So with that, let's move on to the first step. So as a beginner, what you should do at the beginning is to focus on the story, okay? So don't waste too much time grinding ritual miracles or, or basically other PvE content if it's not at least like the ninth difficulty and above. So just work your way through all the different chapters all the way down to chapter 12. This is where your goal is. So for your first goal, that will be easy mode on chapter 12. Now then some of you guys might be wondering, so how do I get relics if I don't farm like the ritual miracles or some of the other PvE content, right? That's not a problem. Okay, so not only can you get the, the full set relic from the story mode itself. Like, so let's say when you're doing this particular chapter right now, you do have a chance of getting like one of these very low rarity relics. But the thing is not really a problem. You just need to complete the set and you will get the set effects just like that. And that should be enough for you in the early game or at least like the earlier part of the early game. However, there is another way that you can obtain relics and that is by going to your trials and going to your expedition. So as you can see over here in the expeditions, you can obtain relics by doing some of these over here, which in my opinion is a great way to farm relics at a cheaper cost without having to invest too much of your stamina into doing ritual miracles, which requires a lot more stamina. Now, step two, we need to focus on a beginner team, okay? You need to have five espers built, right? Actually, there's just more than five. There is actually six espers minimally. Okay, so the first five espers that I'm referring to, the first is going to be Liling. Okay, so when you start your game, you have a chance of getting either Liling over here or you can also get Tang Xuan over here. So I would highly suggest you, if you do not yet know how to reroll, you can check the reroll guide up at the top and try to reroll for a Liling. It's really quite simple. So Liling is going to be the first Esper that I would suggest you to build. And second, I'm going to suggest you to build Drew, who is also one of the free Espers that you get from the start. Here is Drew. And next, you may want to focus on Changpu. She's also another free-to-play Esper over here. And Berenice, who is also another great option, as well as Anki Chai over here. So these three Espers, especially Changpu, Berenice, and Anki Chai, if you do not even have them, you can obtain them for free by participating in some of the Ripple Dimensions that you can see in the chat. So sometimes you will see like Ripple Dimension Lia was revealed by someone or like Ripple Dimension Leon is revealed by someone. So if you do see them, definitely go for them. But all you need to do is to just get one copy of them and that's enough because you'll eventually get a lot of them by summoning. So just to reiterate, the first five experts that you should be building is going to be Liling, Drew, Changpu, Berenice and Anki Chai. Now the third step is obviously to build your sixth unit that I was talking about. Okay, so the sixth Esper, that will be Mona. So this is one of the free Espers that you get from the start as well and she is very good for fodder farming, especially for the early game. So I would highly suggest you to raise her as your first six star Esper and give her all the beginner relics that the game gives you. So the game gives you Hades and Avatara relics. So the game in the story mode does give you a free Hades set and a free Avatara set. So Hades basically gives you health regeneration when you attack and Avatara makes you counter attack enemies. And I'm not exactly sure where you get them, but I think it's between chapter six and chapter nine as part of the first clear rewards. So with Mona, you can farm at the highest practice stage that you can, which usually ends at around Purgatory 1 for a 6-star Mona with plus 15 beginner relics. And as you can see from my Mona, I do not even have her skilled out at all. That's because you don't really need to invest in her too much. Just make sure that she's fully ascended over here and she's fully raised to 6-star level 60 and just give her the maxed out basic beginner relics and that should be good enough. So save your skill ups for other 4-star espers that really require them a lot more than Mona. And as you can see, she is completely unequipped. That's because I'm not using her anymore. So eventually you're going to retire Mona in the mid game or the end game, depending on what kind of espers you have and depending on what kind of relics you also have. So 
for me, I personally moved away from Mona into Dona. I think Dona is a much better and a much stronger Esper for farming fodder. But of course, some other really good options are going to be Tangxuan and Liling as fodder farmers. They do really well and they have their own kinds of lifesteal or self-heal and self-sustainability, but they will require much better relics. And now step 4, only raise DPS Espers to 6 stars at the beginning and keep your supports at 5 stars. There are some exceptions like Clara who scale off her max HP and does need to be raised to 6 stars eventually. But for the most part, your supports can do perfectly fine as a 5 star and your DPS benefits a lot from being at 6 stars. Now step 5, use a weaker arena defense team to grow your point wall slowly so that you don't rush into difficult whale territory too soon. So the reason why you want to grow slowly is so that you can manage yourself and make sure that you can beat some of the easier targets. So like for example this guy over here, he has an easy defense setup which makes it easy for me to farm all this currency that I will need to buy certain stuff in the shop. So some of the more important things to buy in the shop is going to be the Billimon which costs a thousand currency and the gold record which costs 200 and I think there's two of it so that's 400. So make sure that your opponents are easy to handle but that's of course not all. Next, you also want to make sure that you participate in the cute miracle every other day. So this is the cute miracle over here in the middle. And as you can see, once you have completed it, you can then go to the shop and buy some stuff that resets every two weeks. So one of the more important things is that it sells six epic ability mods, which gives you skill ups for your epic espers. And this is so important for the early and mid game. And aside from that, they also sell gold records, which is more ways for you to get more summons. And if you have a spare currency like I do, then you can use it to buy gold just like that. I think this is still quite worth it. And of course, very importantly, you should also join a club because a club also has its own shop. So as you can see over here, there are some daily tasks that you should complete. And if you complete these daily tasks, they do give you some rewards over here, which are called club points, obviously. And you can use these club points in the shop for you to get even more gold records. Now, step six, I'm not sure whether I can show you right now, but it is quite rare, okay? So step six is to farm Suhua and Dahlia Ripples and to aim to fully resonate them both. So for example, over here, like I talked before, you may encounter a very rare ripple dimension or rather it's not so rare, but it's very, very oversubscribed. So when it pops up, it tends to disappear immediately. So over here, Changpu just spawn. You can click on it to assess it and then you can partake in it. So if you do see Suhua and Dahlia pop up over here, Dahlia will be purple. Then fastest finger first, try to farm up at least, at least one copy of each of them. Now step seven, this is where you start to be a little bit more comfortable with the game. And this is where you may achieve your first fusion. Okay, so for your Esper fusion, you should definitely try to obtain at least one copy of both Gabriel and Fabrice. You will need one copy of Fabrice to make one copy of Gabriel. But after that, you should grind another copy of Fabrice because I think Fabrice is quite useful as well. And the reason why Gabrielle is so good is that her skill set is extremely powerful. And not only that, she is also one of the fastest experts in the game. So let's quickly take a look at her skills without wasting too much time. So this is her third skill. It grants your entire team with immunity and defense up for two turns and an attack debuff on the enemy team for two turns. This is extremely strong. And her second skill inflicts defense down for two turns on the entire enemy lineup. So Gabrielle is definitely something that is both very defensive and very offensive at the same time. So she's a very strong support. Now, the reason why I need you to farm Gabriel right now is because on step 8, that's where you try to achieve a 100 floor clear on the Spatial Tower. So you can assess the Spatial Tower by going to Trials, and on the top left, there is the Infinite Miracle over here. For me, it's Temporal Tower because I'm done with Spatial Tower, but for you, it's probably going to be the Spatial Tower. And the reason why you need to complete the 100th floor is because on the 100th floor, when you do complete it, you will get a free Legendary 5-star Lucas. So this is Lucas, and the reason why he's so good is his amazing AP controller. So as you can see on his first skill, he steals AP from the enemies up to 45% of the target's AP. And on his third skill, he also steals more AP. So he's one of the more useful espers, especially for both PvE and PvP. So he has a lot of value. So you might be wondering, how can I defeat the Spatial Tower and what are the espers that I will need? So very simply, the first esper that is going to be very important is going to be Gabriel. This is the one that I asked you to fuse. And next, it's going to be Tang Yun. I think Tang Yun is an excellent DPS Esper. So he's actually just a rare Esper over here. So it's very easy for you to obtain him. And next, obviously going to be Su Hua, which is what I recommended you to summon from the Ripple Dimension. So here is Su Hua. And next, as a very strong healer, which you have to summon for, so you may or may not have her, that's going to be Heng Rie. If you do not have a Heng Rie, you can still continue using the Changpu that you were using earlier. And the fifth Esper that is also one of the Espers that I recommended you to reroll for earlier is going to be Liling. So I think Liling is an excellent Esper meant for all the way up to the 100th floor of the Spatial Tower. And of course, while you are trying to ascend Spatial Tower to the 100th floor, 
what you can also try to achieve is a full clear on the story mode. So I'm talking about purgatory difficulty as well. Try to complete up to 12-8 of purgatory. And this way you get a ton of summons, you get a ton of gold records and also some special summons such as the shimmer records as well. And at this point, you should be really, really comfortable with the game right now. So what your next objective should be is to build a very strong and very sustainable K10 team and an A10 team. So K stands for Kronos and A stands for APEP. Don't worry too much about Fafnir, not a lot of people do it right now and frankly it's a little bit too challenging for new players to get into. And for step 9, we are just going to focus on just Kronos. And a specific Kronos team that is quite useful for early gamers is going to look something like this. It's going to be a Liling, Suhua, Berenice, Drew and of course going to be a Lucas. I do not have a Lucas because unfortunately the game just released Lucas in the Spatial Tower 100 floor reward. So I won't be using Lucas but the 5th slot is where you would put him. However, you may also replace Berenice with Sender if you do have him. So this is Sender. So I think Sender is a great Esper to use which would be a very good leader as well because he increases the speed of your entire team by 25%. And you may also choose to replace the Suhua over here with a Dahlia and maybe not use them both at the same time. So you may want to remove her that way. But I still feel that Suhua is going to be a little bit better for newbies because Suhua helps a lot with your support and your sustainability because of her defense buffs and her second skill which is a heal. But APEP is going to be a lot more challenging and frankly it's quite hard to do. So for me, it's by having some espers that needed to be summoned. So for example, some espers that I think are quite useful over here that is very hard to replace is going to be your Jacob. Jacob over here needs to be summoned. You cannot obtain him freely. And Drew is not a bad choice. And as you can see, I'm using Suhua over here as well. And they're going to give it the biggest bang for buck, especially for Drew and Suhua because I still use the both of them in my Kronos 10 team as well. So for APEP, I wouldn't worry too much about this for now. I would just focus more on doing K10 as much as I can. And in fact, I will do K10 so much until I have a bunch of really strong relics before moving on to APEP. Pep. And once you have both a working APEP 10 team and a Kronos 10 team, that's when you're pretty much done with the mid game or rather that's when you're kind of like stuck in around the mid game. Which is also where you can start to work on your point wall. So that's where you can probably try to climb as much as you can because maybe your relics are good enough to sustain you through some of the more difficult players out there. But anyway, that will be it for this video. This was a really long video and I apologize for it as well. So do let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section below and I will respond as soon as I can and whenever I find the time to do so. So you can ask away and clarify any of the doubts you may have about the game and about progression and all that kind of good stuff and I will try my best to answer all of your questions. So with that said, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more dislike content. And this has been free to play by the way, and as always, I will see you in the next video.